If you're thinking it's probably time that we should get a hybrid, then you definitely need to watch this video because in it we're comparing three really different types of hybrids that you need to know about. The first is this, it's the Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. Over here we've got a Nissan X-Trail e-power and on the far side we've got the Toyota RAV4 hybrid. Now in this video you're going to find out how much these SUVs cost, obviously how much fuel they use and also what they like to drive. Now if you want to find out more about practicality, features, safety tech, all of that kind of stuff, read the full review at carsguide.com.au. Now we have got pretty fancy versions of each model today, which also means they're pretty pricey as well. This Toyota RAV4 is the cruiser grade. Now it sits just below the top of the range edge. I need to point out as well that this Toyota RAV4 that we've got is a 2022 model. That's right, we couldn't get our hands on a 2023 model. They're in short supply at the moment, as you might know, but that doesn't affect this comparison. The hybrid system remains unchanged. That. Nissan X-Trail, it's the top of the range TIL, very fancy indeed. And this Mitsubishi Outlander that we've got here today is the Exceed Tira. It sits at the very top of the Mitsubishi Outlander range as well. And those are the prices right there. The Outlander that we have here is also a 2022 model. Now the Outlander is a lot more expensive than the other two, but you don't have to get this grade. You can actually get the entry grade, which costs around about the same amount of money as the RAV4 or the X-Trail. The Mitsubishi Outlander is also the only seven-seater SUV that we have with us today. The RAV4 and the X-Trail are both five-seaters, but having said that, these SUVs are absolutely super practical. I've lived with each of these separate SUVs with my family, a little family of four with two kids, and they have been absolutely family fit. They have great sized boots, they've got good rear legroom and headroom, there's plenty of space, there's good cabin storage. And also check out these doors on the Nissan X-Trail. These have to be some of the widest opening doors on the market. Seriously, when you've got a one year old and you're putting her in and out of a car seat, a gap that big makes all the difference. But you know what? This isn't a practicality competition, it's a hybrid comparison. So let's do this. Now, as I said at the start, we have three really different hybrids here. Let me take you through each one. The RAV4 hybrid we have here is a two-wheel drive and it has a four-cylinder petrol engine and an electric motor. Now, the engine and motor can work together to drive the wheels, like when you accelerate harder to get up a hill, or they can operate independently. So if you're driving slowly around a car park and you've got enough charge in those batteries, the electric motor will do the work. An advantage of the RAV4 Hybrid is that you don't need to plug it in to charge the batteries. Charging happens automatically as you drive and when you brake. Now the Outlander. You will need to plug this one in to charge it if you really want to get the most out of it. It's even written on the side to remind you. There are two motors, one that drives the front wheels and another one at the back that drives the rear wheels. That makes it all-wheel drive. There's a four-cylinder petrol engine as well, but it's mainly there to generate power for the motors. That engine though can also drive the front wheels when you're cruising at high speeds, like on a motorway. And while it's doing this, any excess power is used to charge the battery pack. Braking also charges the batteries. But yes, you will need to plug it in to charge it and the cable that comes with the Outlander will let you plug it into a regular household power point. That's how I did it and it took me eight hours to fully charge it this way. But in return, you'll get 84 kilometers of electric driving range. A faster charger, like the ones that you find at petrol stations, will charge the battery from 0 to 80% in about 40 minutes. The Nissan X-Trail e-Power has a three-cylinder petrol engine, but it has one job, to generate electricity for one electric motor driving the front wheels and a second motor that controls the rear wheels. So it's also all-wheel drive, and that's what the E-Force badge on the back is referring to. Three different hybrids, they are also really different to drive as well. So let's do that. All right, let's start with the Toyota RAV4 Hybrid. Now, if you haven't driven a hybrid before, you're not very familiar with hybrids, then this, this is a really good place to start. It feels the most like a regular petrol SUV to drive. So what you've got, you've got an electric motor on the front axle, you've got that petrol engine, and it tends to sort of favor 
the petrol engine a lot. So you go up a hill and the petrol engine kicks in and that electric motor kind of supports, plays a supporting role uh, to, the, to the engine. At lower speeds, uh, the electric motor does the work and you can just cruise around quietly like a car parks. But as soon as you put your foot down like this, you can hear the petrol engine arrive at the party. Now, in terms of what the RAV4 hybrids like to drive, it's actually, it's actually the best to drive out of our three SUVs that we've got here today. So it's better than the Outlander and it is better than the X-Trail. Um, that's because the steering feels absolutely spot on. The comfort, the ride comfort is excellent and the handling is really good too. It doesn't feel as big as those SUVs as well as those other SUVs. It actually feels smaller, more nimble and more agile as well. All right, the Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. That's a mouthful. Um, look, this is really different to drive compared to say a Toyota RAV4 hybrid. It's almost like the opposite of a RAV4 hybrid. The RAV4 really favored the engine over the motor. The motor was more of a, an assistant to the engine. For the Outlander plug-in hybrid, it's kind of the other way around. This system avoids using the engine, the petrol engine, as much as possible. So it will try and run on its electric motors pretty much all the time. And really the only time that the petrol engine kicks in is over speeds of 70 k's an hour. So right now, at 40 k's an hour, just driving around these suburban streets, we're in pure electric mode. Um, the only point at which that petrol engine will start helping is if, let me put my foot down, no still electric, still electric. So a RAV4, the petrol engine would kick in. This will run on EV mode or run on electricity until you get to 70 k's an hour. Now, as your charge in your battery depletes, now don't forget it's a plug-in, so you plug it in and you get 84 k's of electric range. But as that goes down, the petrol engine starts working as a generator and starts recharging those batteries for you. So yes, you do, it, you absolutely have to plug this in every night if you're gonna use it, but it's also really good at recharging its own batteries all by itself. So yeah, the Outlander plug-in hybrid feels a lot more like an EV to drive. It's a lot quieter. Um, you're driving on electricity alone a lot of the time, most of the time, just about, uh, as long as you've got that full battery or you know some charge in the battery. Um, but what's it like to drive just in terms of the car? Look, it's not as good to drive as the RAV4. It doesn't feel as nimble and light and sort of um, enjoyable to drive. It feels bigger. It feels a bit more boaty. Um, and look, even going around this corner now, you can feel there's quite a bit of there's quite a bit of lean there as well. It's not a bad thing. It's still really easy to drive, but it doesn't feel as as planted as the RAV4 and going around some country roads that we went on yesterday, it doesn't feel as sporty either. Wait till you hear about how much petrol this uses. It's, it's so good I thought I made a mistake. All right, now the Nissan X-Trail e-Power. This, this is the strangest hybrid I've ever driven. Now, you do get used to it after a while, but basically it's strange because it's an electric vehicle with a petrol generator. So the petrol engine isn't turning the wheels at all. The electric, <laughs> the electric motors are turning the wheels. Um, what the petrol engine is doing is just charging the battery. So it's basically like having an electric vehicle and uh, so that you never run out of electricity, uh, you've got a generator that runs on petrol. It's a three cylinder. Um, and what's weird about it is that it just comes on at random time. So you might accelerate hard, but like there's no sound in your petrol engine revs going up, but you'll be sitting at the traffic lights and it will just like turn on for no apparent reason. Obviously there is an apparent reason, that's the charge of the battery. Um, I mean, the good thing about this is that it does drive really like an EV. It's super smooth, um, it's quiet most of the time when that generator or that engine's not coming on. Um, and look, it is, it, is a, it is really enjoyable to drive. So the good thing about this, one of the good things about this system is that you never have to plug it in to charge it. It's constantly topping its batteries up by itself for you. 
So what's it like to drive just in terms of an SUV? Um, it actually feels the most high end uh, of, of our of our three SUVs today, Ev all the touch points feel good. The seats feel good. What I can see looks really prestigious, and the ride is quite good. It just doesn't feel as good as the Rav4s, um, but it definitely is better to drive in terms of comfort and handling than the Outlander. Now, Mitsubishi is not going to be happy with that because these two cars are fairly closely related. Um, they use a lot of the same engineering and even looking at the steering wheel and the controls and the, and the instrument cluster, it looks very similar to the Outlander's versions as well, just slightly, slightly different. Okay, so down here I've got an e-pedal button and when I press it, what it does, it turns the braking regeneration to charge the batteries on really really heavily and that means it charges the batteries like at its maximum strength but it also means that you don't need to touch the brake pedal you just take your foot off the accelerator and it slows down like a dodgem car okay so listen to this this is quite interesting i put my foot down petrol engine kicks in take my foot off and the petrol engine keeps <laughs> running and then coasting down this hill, I've got, I'm on electric only. Go around here, here's a big hill. We'll see what it does for here. Acceleration's quite good, actually. So is that steering, I like that ride, it's good too. Okay, petrol engine's kicking in. Okay, put my foot right down. And yeah, it does, it does kick in when you accelerate. But then it stays on to charge those batteries. But it's not actually powering the wheels. That's the petrol engine I'm talking about. It works, it works. It's, um, you do, and you do get used to it after a while. You just have to sort of completely throw out what you already know about combustion engine cars. Now, because a lot of the time the Outlander is driving under electric, mode only. It has to emit this sound to let people know you're coming. Can you hear it? It's even louder when you go in reverse. It's like a UFO landing. I mean, I've never heard a UFO land before. But that's how I imagine it would be. The Nissan x e-power also makes a warning sound at low speed to let people know they're coming. And it's also loud when you put it in reverse too. It's like Santa's bells, only techno. The RAV4 doesn't actually have a warning sound to let people know you're coming. It's mainly because it probably isn't always driving in EV mode. Let's just try it in reverse. Not really, you can hear the hum of the electrics, but no audible warning sound. Hmm, the others do. Okay, fuel efficiency, that's what this is all about, isn't it? Well, the car makers say that after a combination of open and urban roads, the figures that you see on your screen right now is how much petrol they should use. But we're not going to trust them. We did it for ourselves. We took all of these on a convoy trip around Sydney. We drove 140 k's. We drove CBD traffic. We drove motorways. We drove through the bush. What we tried to do was drive on the types of roads you would when you own these cars. And these are the figures that we got. Now the Mitsubishi Outlander was outstanding. It got 1.4 litres per 100 kilometres. Seriously, after 140 kilometres, we arrived back at the petrol station. I put the petrol pump in and it just went click. It took just under two litres of fuel. That's all it used after 140 k's. The other two were also outstanding as well. The RAV4 used 3.7 litres per 100 and the X-Trail used 5.9. All really, really good. The thing is though, the Outlander has an advantage. It's a plug-in hybrid, so it's already got 84 kilometers of electric charge ready to go. And we had it fully charged at the start of the day. But as the day wore on, we started to see it use its petrol engine more and the fuel economy went up, but not by a lot. 
So who is our winner today? Okay, well, let's start with the Mitsubishi Outlander. That fuel economy is impossible to ignore. Uh, so is the price. It is a lot pricier than the others. And so is the fact that you've actually got to plug this in to charge it. Uh, but yeah, that fuel economy, wow. The X-Trail, the nicest car here. It's very nice to drive. It's nice to look at. It feels incredibly high end. It's also super practical. I love those doors. But the fuel economy for a hybrid comparison isn't really as good as these two. And then we have the RAV4. The RAV4 hybrid is the ultimate all-rounder. It's the best to drive in terms of ride and handling. And not only that, it's really fuel efficient as well. Plus, you don't need to plug it in. But today, the winner has to be the Outlander. That Outlander plug-in hybrid electric vehicle is the best hybrid that we have here today. But if you don't have a way to charge your car, that is the power point somewhere near the car that when you park it at home, then that Toyota RAV4 Hybrid is the winner for you. Now, if you wanna read the full review where I go deeper into practicality, I cover all the safety tech, the standard features, the ownership, the lot, go to carsguide.com.au.